think crime, unfortunately, um, significantly increased over the last one to two years. And when you have national calls to action or calls to change in policy, as we did as a result of the death of George Floyd, then what you, I think you have is an overreach and an overcompensation to hit a political narrative and not actually address the issue. So for example, um, this call to defund the police. I mean, if you just said that alone by itself three years ago, people would have called you a lunatic. You cannot defund police officers. There's no society that can succeed without law enforcement. So that concept alone is a problem. But then you added two more layers to that. You added these communities that saw these riots occur throughout America who wanted to defund the police and they wanted to do all cash reform bail. And basically what that means is if you're arrested for a violent crime, usually you're detained until your court date. What they did um, in many of these cities that have seen an uptick in crime is they allowed those individuals arrested to be released immediately back into the street. And what we saw was those individuals were then committing even more crimes. And three, if you take, um, and three, if you take the uh, defunding the police, the no cash bonds, and you actually focus on reducing criminal sentencing for those who have committed serious crimes, then I think you have the unfortunate trifecta of, co of crime skyrocketing at least in terms of serious crimes like murders, aggravated assaults, crimes involving weapons, guns, things like that. And also the narco trafficking trade will increase as a direct result. How, how does that work? How does the, what is that, you know, this intersection point of the narco Sure, absolutely. Unfortunately, you know, the narco trafficking industry is a criminal industry driven by criminals. And the more of them that are out there to deal in narcotics and deal in weapons, the more bodies you have on the streets to do so, then the more increased manpower you have to distribute drugs, to distribute weapons, to distribute money. It's a pretty simple infrastructure that requires people. And if there's more criminals on the streets to deliver the product, then that crime is going to go up as well because the narco traffickers themselves are gonna see more avenues and outlets to push their products through the American streets. So, you know, another piece of this is, and this is something, you know, we, we've I've had guests on the sh on American Thought Leaders on before uh, talking about this specifically mm -hmm. is the impact of actual defunding. I mean, I, I have statistics here, mm -hmm. you know, Austin had like a 30% budget cut to police, New York 15%, Minneapolis 15%. I mean, there's a whole, there's a whole suite of, of cities mm -hmm. that have, that have, experience that and that there's also this sort of element that uh, in, in when you include some of the other things that you just mentioned of police starting to actually behave differently mm -hmm. in terms of how they deal with the uh, uh, people they're uh, I guess alleged criminals or mm -hmm. potential criminals yeah no that's a that's a great point my friends in law enforcement, in the NYPD, in federal agencies who are like the FBI, are more timid today than they were two years ago to arrest someone or to perform their duties because they don't feel that they have the backing of their local leadership or their local governments, their mayors, their governors, and what have you, to protect police action when it's lawful. I think when the police perform against the law or they themselves break the law, then there needs to be serious consequences for those individuals all day long. But you cannot hold an entire police department accountable for the actions of a very small few. I still believe the mass quantity of police officers and law enforcement individuals in this country are doing the job correctly. I do not think there is systemic racism. And that's another issue. That's another political issue that was injected into the law enforcement atmosphere by just saying there was systemic racism in American law enforcement. No, it's definitely not perfect, but it's not systemic, not in my decades-long experience doing uh, law enforcement. Certainly, you know, the statistics when it comes to, for example, you know, gun deaths of mm -hmm. white, this is what's usually sort of suggested when there's a white police officer, there's this kind of, you know, it's even been suggested that there's a genocide against, uh, you know, blacks by white police officers, and the data just doesn't seem to bear that out whatsoever. No, the data, bears out the exact opposite. 
Take Chicago, for instance, okay? Chicago, last weekend alone, 52 gun crimes. And I don't mean carrying a gun. I mean 52 discharges of a firearm in the city of Chicago in 48 hours. That is insane. That's more than one an hour. And the mayor said that the reason for the spike in crime, literally, COVID. What she forgot to take into account was that they forced Chicago to defund the police. They forced, they changed the policies in the judicial system to have cash bail. So criminals that are arrested are immediately released back into the community to commit more crimes. And then the third piece of it is also the number of illegal aliens who are committing crimes are now allowed back into the community. And we see it in major cities all over the country to commit more crimes. So I believe not COVID and people coming out of the COVID coma, as they were calling it, but rather these law enforcement specific policy decisions are impacting crime. And Chicago is unfortunately the best example that we have. New York is a close second, Minneapolis not too far behind, Portland and Los Angeles right behind them. Well, let's talk about actually, let's talk about Portland a little bit because Portland is this example of, you know, sort of skyrocketing mm -hmm. crime, I think in general, um, like I, I've seen different estimates, but like 500%, 1000%, I don't, um, of, of how that looks. And there's, you know, th there was a courthouse that was occupied yeah. for months, mm -hmm. you know, um, just kind of a, and, you know, we've gotten all sorts of reports of a general state of lawlessness there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, just step back, and for those of you that are listening to this, think about this. A courthouse in the United States of America in 2020 was taken over by criminals. That's what happens in banana republics. That's not what happens in America. And the fact that it did happen should show people that lawlessness and poor policy decisions have led to real consequences in major cities across America. And Portland was basically an, an occupied area. I mean, they literally had sections of the street that law enforcement were not allowed to go on and that people were just camped out in. And then they took over an entire courthouse and then they burned the courthouse. You cannot expect a society to have law enforcement and crime under control when the institutions that house law enforcement are literally on fire and occupied by criminals. It seems like or the situation in Portland, or at least there's a kind of a different language coming from the local government now um, in terms of how to, you know, basically call, trying to stop the criminal, the alleged criminal behavior and so forth. Yeah, I think, well, it's unfortunately it's taken too long. It's taken over a year for them to get there. But I think they have to live in their own lawlessness and have it impact their lives personally and directly. And so they can remove themselves from the political uh, falsehood they've set up and see how bad it's affecting their citizens. And then they realize, wait, we actually need police officers to patrol the streets. We need police officers to arrest people committing crimes. And we need the judicial system to adjudicate them on whether or not they were innocent or guilty. And then you actually need prison sentence handed down if you are found convicted of a serious crime. People need to be held accountable for that. 